This hall is by far the most unique and beautiful building that I have ever presented in. And I did a bit of research. The Armourer's Company was formed in 1322. It's 450 years before the discovery you guys discovered Australia. So as an Aussie, I'm very humbled to be in this building. Rockfire Resources is focused on building a new underground zinc lead silver mine in Greece. The reason I say new is because Greece already has an operating underground zinc lead silver mine. What we're trying to achieve here is not new to the Greek government. They know what they're doing, they've done it before, they're very familiar with mining, and this is contrary to what many people believe about Greece. We're headquartered here on the, uh, on the AIM, our project, as you'll see, Molai in Greece. We also have copper and gold assets in Australia. Now, this presentation will be very much focused on our Molai zinc project, which is high grade, and I will very briefly mention the other projects in Australia. We have a recently announced a joint venture on our Australian gold project with Sunshine Gold, and we are actively looking for, uh, <laughs> funny enough, partners for our copper project. So um, we have two large porphyry copper projects in Australia. Now, the heading of this presentation is, of course, critical minerals and sustainable future. These are the projects listed on the right. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. If you can't, don't worry. This is on our website. And I'm hoping that this evening our website will crash with all of you reading this presentation again. So what we have is zinc, lead, silver, germanium, which is an unusual one. When we discovered the germanium at Molo, we actually had to look up what it was. Uh, gold, copper and molybdenum. So we've got all these critical metals. We also have the, um, the sustainable energy minerals. This is a great position for rock fire to be in. You'll see the uses of them, uh, wind power, solar power, hydro power, electric vehicles, uh, and even uh, military applications. These are our resources. Rockfire has built a very good portfolio of JORC compliant resources in each of these metals. You can see in Molai we have zinc, lead and silver. We also have the presence of germanium as I mentioned. There are no resources of or reserves or resources of germanium, mainly because most of the drilling in the past uh, didn't actually analyse for germanium because it had not been identified at that time. Plateau, the project we've recently joint ventured with Sunshine Gold, 131,000 ounces of gold and again silver. And Copperhead in Australia, 80,000 tonnes of copper. We have molybdenum and silver again. But we're focused on Greece. And you can see there lead. We've been through this wind, hydro, solar, zinc for wind, hydro, solar, and silver for, for solar. A lot of companies put up some of these slides that say, well, why Zimbabwe? Why Madagascar? Well, my question is, why not Greece? And you can see there, there are a few stereotypes associated with Greece. Most of us have been to Greece for holidays. And you know, there's lots and lots of cats. There's a great history. And the critical thing is that operating in Greece, it's safe for our personnel. You can go to many countries where your personnel are at risk. I have personally operated in the Philippines where I've had to be accompanied with people with rifles, okay, in the 1980s. So having a, a, a free jurisdiction, Greece, of course, is the bosom of democracy and it's a great, great place to operate. However, the real reason that we're there is the mineral prospectivity of Greece. It's phenomenal. Over in the east here, you've got the Thracian and Macedonian belt. 
They're all gold, those yellows. I'm not sure if you can make out the, the colours there, but you certainly will see them when you reread this tonight. But you've got a distinct and clear boundary here uh, where the gold is focused over in this area, the Thracian gold, the very famous gold. King Philip, Alexander the Great, they have these beautiful wreaths of hand-beaten gold. I don't know if you've ever been in, the, in some of the, the museums in, in Greece, but this is all Thracian gold. So the prospectivity up in here for gold, in the middle, guess what? Chromium, cobalt, nickel, rare earths, they've got the lot. What a great place to be. And down in here, where we are at Molai, all of this built in through here is prospective for zinc, lead and silver. So it's, this is a very gross generalisation of the geology, but it does nicely show the concentration of these deposits in Greece. It's a very well-endowed country. A proven mining act. I get back to what I mentioned earlier, that Greece has done this before. They've got an underground, uh, this one here, Stratoni on the right. So this one here is the underground zinc, lead, silver mine. Um, they're familiar with it. They know what they're doing. They know what to expect when we're putting together our studies. And this is the sort of thing that we have in mind. Scuris is back on track with their development progressing. That's a Canadian company, El Dorado, that owns both of these projects. And uh, they also see the, uh, the tremendous prospectivity of this country. <clears throat> so energy relies on zinc, lead and silver, funny enough. We've got the solar photovoltaic batteries. Uh, wind technology, hydroelectric power, energy storage. Okay, so this is everybody has seen this in numerous presentations by companies, and interestingly enough, germanium. And germanium is used in the PET. These plastic bottles, all of the plastic bottles and the plastics that we we throw out and and plus or minus recycle, um, are the um, uh, they have germanium in them. It's used as part of the process of producing these. Electronics, all of the componentry, germanium. Advanced driver systems. Forget the days when you used to, uh, what do they call it, the touch park, when you reverse into the car behind you and you, reverse, you advance into the car in front. It's all now this technology of, um, of sensors around the car and those sensors are germanium. So they're used. And interestingly, germanium can be made into a glass. And it's the glass components of your mic, your, your um, what do they call this? Mobile phones and computers and all these tablets. The glass has the germanium in it. So germanium is a really good high-tech mineral to be in. And of course, as I mentioned there on the bottom, solar as well. So germanium is a, a really interesting critical metal. We have that at Molai. It's associated with the zinc. We've already done some metallurgical test work and we've floated off a zinc concentrate and we've floated off a separate lead silver concentrate. So two different streams, but germanium reported with the zinc. So we had up to 117 parts per million germanium reporting to the zinc flotation concentrate. Some of the achievements that we've made in 2022 I, I'm not sure if you can read that at the back. Again, I won't focus on this. You're at liberty to be able to read this at your leisure this evening, which I'm sure you all will do. Um, but we've focused here the reanalysis of the old drill core. And we found tremendous correlation between our analysis of the old drill core and the original analysis of the drill core in 1988. Germanium was discovered, 10th of May. We produced our maiden jork resource. We did our metallurgical test work. Our diamond drilling commenced in November last year. We found massive sulphides and we had our first drill hole there with seven metres at 13.4 zinc equivalent. So tremendous widths for underground mining and tremendous grade. Now we have already told the Greek government we have no intention of doing open cut mining for social and environmental reasons, I think it would be tremendously difficult to try and achieve that in Greece. So we have to be realistic about the expectations of the community. We have told them that we will focus on underground development. Those grades are fantastic 
for underground zinc operations. An extremely advanced brownfield project. There have been 179 diamond drill holes drilled by the Greek government. They did three rounds, and we've done one round, of metallurgical test work. The fauna and flora studies have been done in previous uh, studies. Detailed hydrogeological studies, geotechnical studies, two feasibility studies, techno-economic optimisation studies, portal and underground development. Here it is here. This is what the Greek government started. They actually constructed the portal. They went uh, down to about 50 metres depth, so it's a 700 metre long decline and they constructed a crushing and grinding circuit. So this is a very advanced project. The concrete portal there, uh, the decline was three metres by three and a half metre uh, decline, which is a, a pretty standard size for a decline. A lot of declines now are five by five and a half metres, but three by three and a half for an exploration decline like this is a reasonable size. Uh, it's enough to be able to drive down through the decline to the ore body, and they produced the... Um, uh, oh, go back. There we are. And uh, they produced uh, uh, very small amounts of concentrate. They got lots of samples in, produced concentrate to make sure that they had sufficient material to make sure that those concentrate studies were meaningful. This photo in the middle here is where we've actually come and, and uh, found the old portal. So we got the back home, we dug out the old portal. So we found the old portal now. Um, we're not sure if we're going to go back into that because the ground conditions are probably not favourable after 1988. So it's something that we will certainly assess as we go forward. This is a long section. So what we've done is cut the earth, a slice through the earth, and we're looking towards the west. And you can see here there's a bit of a hill up in here and then the valley. But what I wanted to show with this is the grades. Now these are zinc grades. They're not zinc equivalent grades. But all of this is greater than 10% zinc. This is a tremendous grade, as I mentioned, for underground mining. So our rule of thumb is that you do want greater than 10% zinc, and uh, we've certainly got that at Molay. Uh, this does not represent the full length of the ore body. This is only 500 metres. The, ore, the, the, the resource that we have is about 1.4 kilometres long, and there has been zinc found in nearly all drill holes for a further five and a half kilometres, which we have under licence. Here it is. This is what it looks like. You can see the scale bar there. That's our seven kilometre long licence. The blue is our current jork resource. This is based on 179 drill holes, but the red is the visible zinc at surface. So we've got seven kilometres here of visible zinc at surface, but also take into account the repetitions. You can see over here, you've got multiple loads. You've got loads like this, and then multiple loads, they twist, they turn, and this opportunity here means that we could potentially have five times as much zinc there as we currently have. In addition to this, Beyond our licence, there's another 12 kilometres of zinc occurrences. So the long-term projection here is a very large project as time continues. Our objective is to try and get into production here on the blue as quickly as we can, bearing in mind that blue is 1.4 kilometres long, high-grade zinc. It's been thoroughly drilled. Our drilling is simply... Uh, infilling to bring from in inferred resources up to indicated, measured and indicated resources. Okay, so that's what we're focused on and you'll be reading more about that to get that into production on a 10 year mine life. Uh, we're looking at about 400,000 tonnes of zinc is our target before we actually start the production. A bit about the timing of the production. Our aim is to drill for the rest of this calendar year and start our feasibility studies next year, in 2024. Now, realistically, you're probably looking at 12 months in Greece to be able to get a feasibility study uh, submitted and accepted. Now, I've done feasibility studies in Australia. We got them in, submitted and accepted within about seven to eight months. I think it will take, realistically, at least 12 months to get that done in Greece. 
uh, and we are realistic about our expectations. And then in 2025, we would be looking to start construction of the flotation circuit. We expect the capital costs won't be that high because what we're planning to do is a simple, very simple flotation circuit, uh, bag it up, dewater it, bag it up, and then send it off to a refinery. Now, this is our licence showing the prospects. They all have names. Uh, most of them I can't pronounce, but that's OK. Um, but you can see here, I've given you some of, the, some of the grades that have been hit in drilling by the Greek government. 0.3 at 3.2, 3 metres at 6, 7 metres at 10, 3 metres at 12. These are undrilled up in the north. OK, half a metre at 27% zinc. Now, in the old core, we got up to 36% zinc in the old core. That's fantastic grade for an underground mine. Not only that, we've taken another slice through the earth. We've come along, we've cut the earth. Now we're looking north. So we've turned our focus looking to the west. We're now looking north. And you can see here the red dots. These red dots are the ones that are in our maiden jork resource. The black dots, we haven't even included them yet. So we've got one and a half metres at 18 per cent zinc sitting out there. We've got two and a half at nine, nine at three, two at 11, and two at 7.8. None of this is included in our resource. So this is all going to be incorporated into our next resource upgrade. So you'll find that there will be a substantial increase in the resource based on these multiple lenses that occur in the hanging wall, which is above the ore zone, and the foot wall, which is below the main ore zone. Outstanding infrastructure. This is the storage of the 179 drill holes. The Greek government stored them under, under cover. It's tremendous. We've been able to come along and find all of this drilling, and it's, it's just fantastic for us to have that asset. We estimate that the Greek government has probably spent about 30 to 40 million euro at this project prior to our involvement. That's a tremendous head start for us and something that we're very grateful for. Here's the, um, the uh, infrastructure at the site. This is, this is now um, decommissioned, so of course it's, uh, it's been um, uh, de deconstructed. We've got mains electricity right through the centre of the licence, great roads, uh, 12 kilometres to the coast, that's important for, uh, for base metal projects, and a highly qualified workforce. I tend to joke about the Greeks because most of them have postdoctoral, doctoral, doctoral research, doctoral posterates. So they've just got so many qualifications. They're extraordinarily qualified. And um, embarrassingly for me, they're uh, far more qualified than Australians tend to be. Very highly educated, um, lovely workforce that we've got. We've taken on a mining engineer, we've taken on a geologist. And these guys are very, very, very smart. And uh, they love the project. Uh, we've got good uh, um, rece reception by the, the local community and, of course, the government. OK, that's just me telling me I've got five minutes left. So I'm, I'm going to have to start speaking faster, so I hope you can listen quickly. OK, so we've got um, excellent metallurgical recovery. So this is our work that we did. Great recovery. The metallurgists were going, wow, this is some of the best recovery we've seen. So look, this is great. Saleable concentrates, 57% zinc, 63% um, lead, germanium, 117 grams per tonne germanium, 800 grams per tonne silver. We actually have copper and gold in here. We end up with 2.6% copper and half a gram gold in the concentrate. Now, the government didn't analyse for copper and gold, so there's clearly some gold and copper in this, and it's something that we will explore as we continue forward. What are the expectations for 23? I talked about them briefly earlier. 2023, we're going to be focused very much on drilling mole. Now, the objective is to bring those inferred resources up to a higher category. Bear in mind, when you do a feasibility study, you cannot use inferred resources, period. The JORC code will not allow you to. So your resources must be either indica uh, indicated or, or measured. So that's our objective for this year, is to bring that level of confidence up so that we can use this data for feasibility studies. And that's just a, a quick summary of our assets again. And I'd like to thank you for, for taking the time to come and, and listen to the presentations today. And I hope it's been really helpful for you to hear about Rockfire.